Audrin and Dion have chosen to live in Malta, that little speck of an island in the middle of the Mediterranean. We visited them in October 2015. The first place they took us to visit was the Ave Regina Colorum. In the Second World War, a bomb was dropped on this church, but miraculously never exploded. They then took us to Nanny Bay where we had a bit of walkabout and then had some drinks at sunset. We were up the following morning, the crack of dawn, after the rooster crowed. We are waiting to catch the water taxi to take us to our history lesson in Valletta. There are some beautiful yachts in this bay, including one named Microsoft. The letter is really a vibrant place. The letter is the tiny capital of the Mediterranean island nation of Malta. The walled city was established in the 1500s on a peninsula by the Knights of St. John, a Roman Catholic order. It's known for museums, palaces and grand churches. We happened upon the street parade as well. We took a little taxi down to the Malta experience and the driver was very talkative and explained the origins of the balconies. Those used to be made, those balconies, to make the rooms bigger. Okay, because people had so many children in the past. Sometimes they had 16 children, sir. Oh, yeah. They used to live in only three rooms. Well, that's nice. <laughs> they had no television, that's why. Off to the motor experience. Baroque landmarks include St. John's Cathedral, whose opulent interior is home to the Caravaggio masterpiece, The Beheading of St. John. The ride down on this external lift was also an experience. Then it was time to find our water taxi and make our way home. Final clean up at home before our next big adventure off to Sicily. Good morning. We have just arrived at the Valletta port. We are on our way to Sicily using Virtue Ferries. We trust it will be a smooth crossing. Signing off. That was our reporter in Malta. <laughs> Once the car was loaded and we were in the ferry, we were off. Hello. The ferry was very comfortable indeed. Lovely leather seats, a restaurant and even a casino. We were soon on our way. The whole journey seemed to last just about an hour. And then we arrived in Sicily. We went down to the garage, jumped in our car and we were off. The roads in Sicily were very good and being quite a mountainous country there are many, many tunnels.
and then we saw Mount Etna. There was quite a lot of smoke coming out of the fissure on the side of the mountain. Our next stop was Taumina. Taumina is a hilltop town on the east coast of Sicily. Although we never saw it, the town is known for Teatro Antico di Taumina, an ancient Greco-Roman theater still used today. After lunch, we went off to go and catch our ferry to Lipari. Lipari is the largest of the Aeolian Islands off the north coast of Sicily. It is also the launching pad for Stromboli, an active volcano to the northeast. The following morning we did an island tour. Not a good idea in such rainy, miserable weather. Lipari mined pumice from its large pumice mountains. Lipari was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. As a result, the mining of pumice was stopped immediately. Lipari relies now entirely on tourism. The weather cleared up, we wandered around town a bit and then had some lunch. The whole Aeolian Island group is a very active volcanic region. This was our B&B, very comfortable, on Madalena Street. resist coffee and cakes in this lovely little cafe. All this fruit is actually made from marzipan. We then continued our journey to the fort where there is a cathedral and some Roman ruins. for the obligatory wine. Here we could get a view of Stromboli. And after some refreshments we were on our way again. There is a lot of volcanic activity in the area. Our captain stopped the vessel and we were able to see the bubbles and smell the sulphur of volcanic activity around us. Stromboli is one of three active volcanoes in Italy. The other two are Etna and Vesuvius. Stromboli erupts approximately every 20 minutes and it's for that reason that it is known as the lighthouse of the Mediterranean. Stromboli is 924 meters high. It has been erupting continuously for the last 2,000 years with the last major eruption being in 2013 and 2014. In the evening we got onto our little boat again and went to go and look at Stromboli erupting. I can't take credit for this picture but this is what we saw. Another day, another volcano. This time Mount Etna. Mount Etna is an active volcano lying between the African and Eurasian plates. It is 3,329 meters high. Etna last erupted on the 3rd of December 2015. This was only a month after we were there. On our way down we came upon this little house which was totally destroyed by one of Etna's eruptions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the audience said. This house is... And so ended our Sicily experience. The next morning 
we were taken to Medina. Medina is a fortified city in the northern region of Malta. It served as Malta's capital until the arrival of the Order of St. John in 1530. Medina was founded around the 8th century BC by Phoenician settlers. It was invaded by the Romans, the Arabs, the French and the British and today it is part of Malta. Once the center for the Maltese nobility and religious authorities, it never regained its pre-1530 importance, giving rise to the popular nickname, the Silent City. The Silent City also refers to the fact that no vehicles of any kind are allowed into the area except for the residents, emergency vehicles, wedding cars and hearses. It's really a privilege to walk around these streets, dating back many, many, many centuries. Our final stop was going to Gozo, but before going there we visited the Popeye movie set, a movie starring Robin Williams. And then another ferry trip. This is the Gozo ferry arriving front opening to let the cars out. It's like a big whale about to gobble up the terminal. Is it them? Yeah, the yellow one. Where's the yellow peril? Where's the yellow peril? <laughs> the Gozo Ferry is a free service offered to one and all between Malta and Gozo. The trip only takes a few minutes and many of the inhabitants of Gozo actually work in Malta. Reminders of times gone by. The original Count of Monte Cristo was filmed in Gozo. And in no time at all we were in Gozo, jumped in our little car and off we went. Gozo is an island in the Mediterranean Sea, one of 21 that make up the Maltese archipelago. Inhabited for thousands of years, it shows evidence of his immigration and rule by the Phoenicians, Romans, Arabs, Sicilians, French and British, amongst others. Join us for a ride through the grottos of St. Lawrence. We visited the Pinu Shrine Church. This church was visited by Pope Benedict a few years ago. And our final stop was at Schlenzi for lunch. Schlenzi is a little village situated on the southwest of Gozo. And then it was home time and dinner for Marceline and Jeff and the end of a truly wonderful trip in Malta. Thank you to Adrian and Dion, hosts extraordinaire.